Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today, we're taking a look at a new type of LED strip. For a while, if you've wanted to at least have somewhat decent whites next to adjustable color, there have only been two options, SK6812, RGBW, or the more recently available WS2814 RGBW. These output RGB, so red, green, and blue, and have a dedicated single white diode. But a lot of people have wanted to be able to switch between two different colors or shades of white, and maybe also have a bit better quality. Well, today we're taking a look at the newest WS2805 LED ICs and on a strip, which are addressable RGB CCT, so RGB and dual white. Okay, let's have a look. Now, let's first start with why you want white LEDs. Isn't white just a combination of red, green, and blue? Yes and no. What makes a white LED special is, is that it isn't a combination of just the spikes of red, green, and blue in the spectrum fused together. This allows for whatever this light bounces onto to accurately reflect back whatever color it is to, well, your eyeballs. If part of the spectrum is not available in the light or the white light that is hitting the object, the light that will be hitting your eyes will be incomplete or even shifted and have wrong information, making a lot of things look, well, quite bad or just not right. By the way, if you'd like to skip the technical info bit and go right towards if I'd recommend this strip or not, and for what use cases, make sure to check out the jump links in the video description. And as always, of course, the affiliate links will be in the description also if you'd like to buy this strip. So here is a CRI bar graph of the sun. This CRI number and graph is a form of measurement for color accuracy for white light. Compare this graph for the sun versus one of a very high quality CRI 95 LED. As you can see, a lot of the spectrum is present in both and that makes this a very good LED. If we now, however, measure RGB white, which my meters won't even recognize, so basically have to force it to do so, you see you only get a few peaks, but a lot of the spectrum is missing. Here is a comparison with the warm white of the strip we are testing today. As you can see, a lot more of the spectrum is present versus RGB white. This makes having a dedicated white LED important for properly lighting your environment. Not just when you're doing photo or video work, but also for a work surface, for instance. Now, even while we've had dedicated white LEDs in, for instance, SK6812, the story doesn't stop there. Even SK6812 RGBW is considered a bad quality white. Take a look at this CRI graph here. As you can see, the R9 value is very low or basically missing. R9 are the red tones and the hardest for LEDs to produce properly. And since SK6812 RGBW LEDs are produced by a single manufacturer only, it doesn't matter where you get the strip, they will always be the same quality LED. This however changed a little bit when WS2814 was released. These are also RGBW, but since this is an external IC, this means the strip manufacturer can choose what LEDs to pair with it. If they get extra high quality binned LEDs, they can improve the quality and spectrum of the white light considerably, so that's a big upside. We also saw this in our look at the WS2814 RGBW Cobb LED strip video, where for the first time we had a decent CRI90 RGBW addressable LED strip. Okay, okay. Okay, enough theory about why white light and its quality is important. In the future, we're going to take a look at this more because of the analog controllers I will be soon releasing. For primary lighting tasks, analog LEDs are still preferred, even with these new chips like the WS2805 coming out. But we'll see more about that later in the video. So, this new WS2805 chip that has become available from World Semi has added a fifth output channel and thus enabling RGB CCT. This means it has a red, green, 
and blue diode, but also dual white, so warm white and cold white diodes. This has been available in dumb LED strips for a while now, but there is now a LED IC available with a compatible protocol so we can run a digital strip with it and support has been added to the most recent builds of WLED. Today we're taking a look at the strip made by BTF Lighting, which comes in 12 volt and 24 volt variants. These have the usual downsides of being per three addressable for 12 volt and per six addressable for 24 volt. Both versions only come in 60 LEDs a meter right now. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the IP65 coded version of both. And if you can't wait, the real world power sheets have already been updated so you can do your proper power calculations for your own set. If you'd like more on how to actually calculate that, maybe uh, take a look at this video. There is also a different chip called the FW1906 that is supported now, but after testing it, it's basically worse in all aspects or specifications than the WS2805, so we're not going to talk about that chip. Let's first take a quick look at some CRI measurements of this WS2805 strip from BDF Lighting. I have done tests on both the 12 and 24 volt variant and they gave the same results. As a surprise, they actually measure quite well CRI wise. What surprises me first is the actual CCT of the light. The warm white is pretty cold at 3500 Kelvin. Normally you'd, you'd expect something around 3000 or maybe 2700 even. The cold white is a bit odd and measures way too high temperature or too low temperature, depending on how you look at it. But I repeated the measurement a few times and I got the exact same results. Normally you'd expect this to be around 6500 K. However, both white shades show an impressive CRI of around 90. And even when you dive a bit deeper into the actual spectrum, it looks good with good R9 numbers for CRI 90. Now, CRI measurements aren't the whole picture. For real aficionados, here are some TM30 results, and they show that not everything is as great as it might seem at first. Especially for the cold whites, the some hues show quite a shift from where they should be. Still, it's miles better than RGB white or even SK6812, which also had dedicated white diodes. So even with all that, these strips actually produce a fairly decent white. We can get all technical about it, but for addressable LEDs, especially if you need dual white, these LED strips are as good as it gets. If you have an application where you need white or du addressable dual white, the WS2805 have my wholehearted recommendation. I think they're currently the best you can get for that. Even though their spectrum isn't perfect, as I said, they're a big step up above SK6812, for instance. Next to this, the WS2805 also has a good PWM frequency of around four kilohertz, which makes them fairly well suited for on-camera work versus the 1.2 kilohertz of older SK6812, for instance. WS2814 is around two kilohertz, and it has to be said, newer SK6812 is also around four kilohertz, just like the WS2805s. So with all these technical bits out of the way, this is actually a new interesting option that's available now. If you have a project or idea in mind where you need to have some form of white light, these are it. <laughs> I see it as the perfect choice for a cabinet lighting, for instance, or staircase lighting, or even a display case where you also want to have some RGB effects and accent colors. For true color accuracy and especially brightness, you'll still want analog LEDs, but for projects where this is a bit of less importance, these strips are a great option. Regarding brightness, it's always a bit hard to show on video, but here is the WS2805 set to 100% warm white. And I have also added an Oxmer 38.4 watt per meter neutral white strip. So they're different shades. This is at 25%. Fifty percent, seventy five percent, eighty 
and 100%. As you can see, even at just 25%, the WS2805 strip is completely outclassed. Another way you can compare brightness is by comparing power usage. Although this is a very crude method, if we'd say that both strips are about 100 lumen per watt, the WS2805 has 5.4 watt of light per meter, while the Oxmer has, well, 38.4 watt per meter. That's seven times the amount. Now, this is an insanely high power strip, but even something more reasonable, such as the 19.6 watts per meter strip, outclasses the WS2805 strip by almost four times. So in that sense, regarding spectrum and brightness, like if you need it for video or photo or in another setting, like a, 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 a task lighting for your desk or whatever, there's just no bypassing analog still at this point. And well, that's also my conclusion about this strip really. If spectrum and especially light output is still most important, like for photo or video or even kitchen worktop applications or task lighting on your desk, the WS2805 is a great step into the right direction, but compared to dedicated analog strip, it's still heavily outclassed on all fronts and especially uh, color rendering, so CRI and light output. But for projects where the amount of light and the actual spectrum of accuracy is of less importance and you want the addressability and RGB, but you still want dedicated whites, these are a great new option. I'd absolutely recommend them in your next staircase project cabinet or project that adds light to your room which isn't maybe the only or primary light source for white light like on your worktop for instance even as a around the ceiling light where you want normal white light most often but sometimes you want some cool effects i think the ws2805 is a great choice and in a stretch if you want it addressable the WS2805 can even be used for some primary purposes too, because as I said, it's basically the best addressable LED strip, which also has white di diodes on there right now. I'm just slightly hesitant to recommend it because of the coldest warm white color and the U shift that are still present. But hey, this could easily be solved by using better quality binned LEDs, since this is an external LED IC. So that's up to the strip manufacturers. I will certainly keep you updated, so make sure you're subscribed. And as always, if you're looking to pick up some of these strips, there are affiliate links in the video description, which help me out keeping the real world measurement table updated and doing these tests. And of course, all of these strips have been tested on the Quinn LED board. So a Quinn LED Dig Uno, Dig Quad or Dig Octa system will have no problems whatsoever driving one of these strips, combined with one of the newest uh, version 15 betas of WLED. Okay, that's it. Catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.